Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Callie and today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up. Now in September I actually got into a bit of a reading slump. I'm currently back into one so it's a good time but I still managed to get a fair amount of reading done because I tried to do these seven books in seven days and it actually ended up being like 10 days long. So I'm gonna just jump right into it. Um, I'm gonna keep doing the format that I've been doing for my past couple of wrap-ups, which is going from my least favorite, ending with my favorites of the month. So I did DNF a book in September. Um, I DNF'd The Paris Hours by Alex George. I just didn't care for this. It felt like a silent movie, which sounds weird about a book, but it had that air of you know these characters were eventually going to come together and something was going to magically happen i don't care for i never like silent films or anything of that nature and nothing super grabbed my interest i didn't care about any of the characters i think i got about halfway through the book and this book's only like 170 pages and i'm like nothing's grabbing at me. And I feel like with a book that short, it has to grab me fast and early. I DNF'd this, which is unfortunate because it's really pretty and I love all things Paris. That was kind of the only thing I really liked was the ambiance of Paris, but even then the writing style I didn't really mesh with very well. So unfortunately I did DNF this one. Next on this list, I am jumping to my 2.5 range and I only have one book and that is The Queen of Atolia by Megan Whalen Turner. This is book two in the Queen's Thief series. It's very detailed. It almost, it's not to the point of where it's like Lord of the Rings detailed, but it is very detailed on the things that I don't think need details. Nothing super plot related happens until about the last fourth of the book. And that's really where this grabbed my interest. So I do want to continue on with this series because of the last quarter of the book, but a lot of the things felt rushed and felt forced to me. It was all over the place. I do want to continue on with the series with how this one ended and kind of see where things build. Moving on to my three star ranges, I have King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I, this has been sitting on my shelf for months and I have finally picked it up because I have finally completed all of Shadow and Bone trilogy and the Six of Crows duology and I could finally get into this one. I don't want to say this is my least favorite in the Grishaverse because it's not. I think that title goes to Siege and Storm. This is, however, very low on the tiering scale just because the first half of these 500 and some pages was really boring. It, it felt like wrap-ups of the original Grishaverse trilogy and Six of Crows. Um, that's more of what it felt like, and I feel like we didn't really get into our plot for Nikolai and Zoya until about halfway through the book. I did love that we get Nina. Nina was probably one of my favorite characters from the Six of Crows duology, and I really loved seeing her. But this book, with how bore, how the it was set up, I kept wanting just more Nina. Nina actually had was dri I felt was driving the plot and driving the story until the last three fourths, where I actually got interested in Nikolai and Zoya, and things happen, and I don't really I'm scared to kind of see where this goes with how this ended, and I I think a lot of things could happen but I'm gonna keep, mm, mm, lots of things. Next in the three-star category, I have Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea by April Genevieve Tolchki. This follows a girl who lives basically in this rundown mansion um, because it's basically all her family has left. She's very weird and very quiet. So she tries to rent out the guest house of the mansion and this weird boy shows up and then all these weird things start to happen in her town. I gave this book three stars because the writing was so in it captivating and I just kept wanting to read more. But every time I would stop reading, I would just be like, what in the actual heck is this book? There are so many weird, just such out there weird concepts happening in this book. It turned very supernatural, which I really liked. And it was, it was a fun read. It just, with the way that these reveals went, it was just like the last paragraph of a chapter and then we just don't touch it for a couple of chapters. And it's just, what is happening? 
I am planning on, there is a sequel to this, which will be interesting, because with the way it ended, it left it open, kind of like, with just, just the dark cracked, just a smidgen. It left that open a little bit. So I think we're actually gonna delve deeper into the actual supernatural-ness that is this book. So very excited to dive into that when I eventually feel the need to pick up a book again. I would highly recommend this as like a thriller read because it is extremely thrilling. Next in the three star category, I have 13 Rising by Romina Russell. This is the finale to the Zodiac Quartet, um, where we are following Ro, who is a disciple of Cancer in this spacey world where each Zodiac sign has their own planet and their own purpose in society. I never liked the main character. She is a very unlikable character. I think the author was trying to go for like a Katniss vibe where you don't like her, but you understand her purpose. I didn't like her and I didn't super understand her purpose. So, and this book with everything that happened at the end of Black Moon, Ro goes into this like spiral that makes me like her even less. And then there was a couple of plot points around that. Cause one of the big issues I did have with this series is we have this big overarching plot that spans the, the four books. And then we have all of these mini plots that seem more important than the actual overarching plot. And I didn't care for that because I feel like it took me out of the story and it took me out of what needed to get done and what needed to be planned and all of that. So overall on this series, I'd probably give it three stars. This had a neat-ish ending. It wrapped up really nicely and it gave a satisfying ending. Next in the three star category, I have The Flame of the Mist by Renee Adier. This is a loose Mulan retelling where a girl is attacked on her way to meet her betrothed and she has to dress up as a boy and infiltrate the group of thugs that attacked her carriage to kind of figure out why she was attacked. This had a lot of potential and I really like Mulan retellings. This wasn't my favorite. The pacing was all over the place. The love interest felt extremely forced and very insta-lovey and I did not care for that at all. The writing and the setting was gorgeously explained. I loved the atmosphere created and all of the things that were going around our plot. But the plot itself wasn't a super big fan of. I do want to finish this duology, see what happens. <laughs> and the last book in the three star category, I have Beastly Bones by William Ritter. This is book two in the Jacobi series, which is a quartet of books based on an idea if Doctor Who met Sherlock Holmes. And that's exactly what these are. We have a supernatural Sherlock Holmes, which is really fun. This one, we follow basically a haunted dig dig site, which in the 1800s is a really interesting thing. And our main female character um, is an aspiring archeologist. And we get to kind of tackle that a little bit. I found this to be extremely boring and it honestly only really picked up the last 50-ish pages. I don't know. I found it, the, the archeology span aspect was a really neat one, but I don't think it was explored enough. I think I wanted more from the dig, more of that, history and understanding of dinosaur bones or um, the, the supernatural bones. I wanted more of that history and lore and what I got was pining and chit chat. I gave it three stars. Moving into my four star category, the first book that I have is I Hope You Get This Message by Farah Naz Rishi. This follows three days, three teenagers, when the world is going to potentially end. Basically, Earthkind gets a message saying that they have been a failed experiment and there is currently a judiciary board to determine whether to terminate the experiment or let them live. So we follow these three teenagers who are trying to figure out or trying to kind of get their lives together in these last three days. And I loved it. It was so much fun. It was in a really interesting format because we actually get each of the characters' perspectives. And then we also get little bits and pieces of the Judiciary Board deciding Earth's fate. And that was really cool to see unfold during this story. And I think that this asked a lot of really good questions about mortality and the human nature. 
um, which was a really cool narrative to get from a teenager's perspective instead of some adults. The only issues is like, you know, the world's supposed to be ending and these adults just kind of let their kids run off and go on this like weird adventure right before the world ends. That felt a little weird. I did really like how it showed how good humankind can be and how awful humankind can be. It didn't show just one or the other, which I think was really important for the success of this book. I also really loved how it ended. Next in the four star category, I have The Goddess in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson. This follows a girl who goes into a cryonic sleep and wakes up a thousand years later instead of, I think it was she was supposed to only be asleep for like a hundred. When she wakes up, she wakes up on this like weird desert area and everyone is calling her a goddess because she is the proclaimed third goddess. And she's just like, I'm a teenager, dude. I got nothing. I was really scared going into this book because I was afraid it was gonna be too Aurora Rising. It was not. Uh, it, it has similar concepts, but it, it was, I could tell the two apart very easily. I think I, what I really enjoyed, I have, what I enjoyed and what I hated about this book was it's a thousand years later, the language has developed into something very odd. So the characters speak in this weird, almost shortcut version of English. And our main character is an aspiring linguist. So I thought that that was a really cool correlation. However, the language made my brain hurt so much because so much of it I had to like consciously think about what they were actually trying to say. I had to piece their sentences together. And there were times where we got the point of view of some of the people in this world opposed to our main character. I was like, I don't even understand half of the words you're saying. And I know that was done on purpose. And I think that's a really cool thing that not a lot of futuristic books take is how language develops and evolves. And I thought that was a really cool way to go about this story but it agitated me so much. I will say I loved the history. We actually get, our main character asks about how they got there, how they got to that planet and how, why things have devolved so much. Cause it's almost like a Mad Max-ish kind of vibe. And I really liked learning about all of that and how those things happened and why they are the way that they are today the other two goddesses and all of that and the mystery behind why she was asleep for a thousand years instead of a hundred. There was a lot of really cool aspects done that I really appreciated. Besides the language thing, every twist was really predictable for me. I think I read too much sci-fi, but I've been, I've been in a huge sci-fi kick lately. So the last book in my four star category, I have The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This is a arc, I believe. Um, this book comes out next February. I got this in a fairy loot box a couple months ago. We follow this society where girls are, te their blood is tested to determine if they are evil or if they are pure. And when our main character finds out that she is evil, she is shipped off to be trained as a gilded one because her blood bleeds gold. And these gilded ones can't die. Basically, the way that they deal with these people is they ship them off to be the front line because there's only one type of death that will kill them and they don't know it until it happens. So it's a very interesting take. Um, and I know the series is gonna be called The Deathless Girls, which fits just perfectly. But I loved the world. The world and the plot twists really got to me. I was so shocked throughout this entire book. It was so beautiful and so vibrant, but I loved all of the morally ambiguous characters, the morally ambiguous plot lines, and the reveals were just chef's kiss. They were glorious. I will definitely be buying a finalized copy of this because I am gonna love this series. The fact that I know what happens at the end of this book and I have to wait probably until 22 to get a sequel hurts my soul. All right, so finally moving into my five star category are my last three books. And the first one being Immortal Rain by Morgan Rhodes. This is the epic finale to the Fallen Kingdom series that I've been reading for the past six months. And this finale, oh, I cried. I cried, guys, it was very emotional. 
and so action-packed, still full of surprises. I was so in love. I am so invested in these characters. And it wraps everything up very nicely. We get very satisfying endings. Maybe not my favorite of endings, but satisfying nonetheless. And I really liked what the author did with some of these characters. I obviously can't go into this. This is book six. I highly recommend reading this series. It's phenomenal and I love it every second of it. And it's just my babies and I love them. And this is definitely a series that I am going to want to reread now knowing all of everything. Kind of like with Throne of Glass and Akotar, where now that I know everything, I just want to, to reread it so I can just be like, that's foreshadowing. I don't know. It's a simple joy I get out of life when rereading books is pointing out foreshadowing. Next on my five star list is actually a reread. I listened to Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. I like to reread The Hunger Games every year. Catching Fire is my favorite in the entire trilogy because Finnick O'Dare basically. And I, these games were my favorite. I don't know why. I think they're just, they were more complex. Um, there was a lot of different pressures and I just, I love The Hunger Games so much. It's such a fantastic series. And my last five star book is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This follows a girl named Spensa who is the daughter of a traitor. We all know that's one of my favorite like tropes. That's a thing. So check there who wants to get into flight school, because, but because of politics, um, they don't allow her. So she actually ends up, I don't wanna say sneaking into flight school, but she, she weasels her way into flight school. And she has so many things set against her, but she's so determined to become a pilot like her dad and redeem her father's name. And it is beautiful. I felt all of the emotions. It was so emotive and I loved every second. It was beautiful. The fight scenes in the sky from pilot's perspectives was so unique and like nothing I had ever read before. And I loved it. It was just so different. And I just, and the twists, holy crap. All of the twists I was not ready for. I was, I was just in Spence's head and I needed everything she believed to be true and when she was finding out all of these things I was finding out all of these things and her and I had very similar reactions to these things and it was just so wonderful and the fact that I got so wrapped up into Spencer's emotions I think says something about the writing of this book and I just I I'm scared to read Star Sight because I'm pretty sure this is ending up going to be a quartet so books two and three are probably going to end up being cliffhangers and I'm scared because there are so many things that can go wrong. There are so many things that can go right. There are just so many things that need to happen. And I want more history. I want to know how we've made it to this society. We only get bits and pieces. But it's still so... I love... Uh, I love it so much. Highly recommend Skyward if you're into sci-fi. So those are all the books I ended up reading in the month of September. Let me know down below in the comments what you ended up reading and um, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And I will see you guys in our next video. Bye!